He's the real deal. Be ready to make a lifelong friend. I think that once you are connected to Ron, he is forever a part of your life. Ron is the type of person that I would say to someone who's serious about not just coming to Nashville to partake of it, but is serious about coming to Nashville to contribute to it. Ron is the type of person I would say to that person, you need to go meet this guy. You can look at Ron's resume and results, all of his many accolades and awards, and tell he is an outstanding sales leader. Here's a man who was able to share his own sales strategies and success story, beginning as an insurance agent inside a Sears store in Oklahoma. He still remembers that booth code, by the way. But he was able to take his experiences and then teach agents how to grow their own business, how to bring customers through the door, how to hit their results. Ron's a great collaborator. He knows how to connect people. Um, he's involved and immersed in this city so much with so many community leaders, and he knows what they do. He takes the time to figure out what they do, how they provide impact, positive impact to the community, what their challenges are, and then he will connect people to create better things. I've met and worked with a lot of people who've been in Leadership Nashville. And the majority of those people have a story about Ron or Ron helped them do something. And so once again, you get this feel that you have to be careful what you say about Ron in Nashville because everybody seems to know him. <laughs> and that's a, that's a very good thing. And everybody pretty much knows the same thing because what you see is what you get with Ron. One of the ways that Ron Corbin has been most impactful and visionary in terms of his leadership with Studio Bank is really helping us build a coalition. We knew early on that it was important for us to capitalize the bank initially with local Nashvillians. We wanted this community bank to truly be owned by the community. But I'd say every single investor meeting where Ron had friends uh, attending, he would also be in attendance. If we missed a talking point, he would chime in during the investor pitch and say, no, this is what Studio Bank is all about. And, and was a strong partner in that way. So Ron was on the board here at the Girl Scouts of Middle Tennessee, and whether it's the Girl Scout board or any board that he says yes to, um, he is committed. And that is really such a wonderful thing, especially in the nonprofit space. He's been very helpful to me in my role as president here at TPAC in learning from him and uh, understanding how he works. Ron speaks in lots of kinds. He speaks in sound bites, really, when you come to think of it. And um, we've picked up a couple along the way and sometimes threatened to even publish a book on the Ron Corbin-isms. So, funny sayings. We used to call them Corbin-isms. And let's see if I can get it like him. If mama ain't happy, nobody's happy. Ron knows how to hold court. I'm here to tell you, if he has something that you need to know, and then not only you need to know, but you need to make sure you're telling everybody else what he's told you that you need to know, he has this regal way of holding court. And that's really about the only way I know how to describe it. But anyone who's been held in court by Ron, they know what I'm talking about. So Ron cracks me up because every time I see him for a meeting, whether it's a scheduled board meeting or he just pops by the bank, um, we'll end you know, asking about how business is going and um, he's always interested in our performance and success and he always says, because you know Corbin's got to eat. I have certainly enjoyed the fact that Ron is passionate about his family. Uh, he loves his grandchildren dearly. And I think to some extent people would say, well, what, what is unusual about that? It's something he and I share that I just think is a wonderful thing. Uh, and we're not ashamed to let people know it. We're not ashamed of how proud we are of our children. But more importantly, I think Ron shares with me the sense that our biological children are well taken care of. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all children were well taken care of? With Ron, you get a package. You get this amazing wife, Brenda Corbin, and their two children, 
are also amazing, Courtney and Brandon. And they are, I think, the personification of a strong family unit that sticks together and they also personify how you can integrate the arts into your everyday life. What really stands out to me is Ron's commitment to making a difference in the community. Whether he's being a voice of change, inclusion, and diversity when it comes to the arts, I suspect that Ron may have had a little something to do with what I will call powerful performances of color. The Alvin Ailey Dance Troupe, for instance, came to Nashville on more than one occasion. Other performances that you might see on the stages of New York, especially shows with multicultural casts and content, they made their way to our city. One of the things that Ron and I share is a passion for education. It's clear to me that we can experience a greater understanding of empathy through our study of art and literature. And this is what we try to convey to our students. So even though we think of Vanderbilt as this major innovative biosciences institute, uh, we do understand that the reason for all of that is to enhance the lives as well as the health of our population. And we get a lot of our understanding of how to interact with people, how to be compassionate, and, and how to really meet them where they are through our understanding of art and literature. So I think business leaders and businesses should invest in the landscape of, of Nashville's um, cultural and artistic um, elements because it makes our city a more beautiful and interesting place. When we were building out our space as a bank, um, we wanted art that was inspirational. We wanted light. Um, and music that fostered creativity because we feel that um, it makes for a more collaborative workplace. There's an appreciation for beautiful art. Um, and so the more that we can have, you know, in Nashville, in our town with, what, 27 cranes and a lot of steel and concrete going up, I think there's opportunities to make sure um, that this town is beautiful and interesting. Pablo Picasso said, art washes away from the soul the dust of everyday life there's a lot of dust in our life. And so you've got to find some way to refuel, to be transported and, and reflect and learn and perhaps look at something differently than you have before because somebody on stage has presented it to you that way. You think about perspectives differently. And so it really does challenge a person, transport a person. You learn when you don't even know you're learning and it's all about being that human being that we get lost in sometimes. The arts are, are broadly defined, and his years of worldly travel, uh, he has been, he and his family have been exposed to a lot. Uh, and as a result of that, can be he's very discerning. But he, again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning, while he may have been exposed to the world, and has extremely discerning taste. He never leaves you feeling intimidated by that. And that I will always be mindful of. Congratulations, Ron, you deserve this award. So I would say congratulations to you, Ron, and congratulations to your family. He and his family really do exemplify the importance of the arts to our community. Now this isn't a Corbinism, but those who know Ron know that he is all about the attitude. In the right kind of way, of course. He would usually end his speeches with a quote by Charles Swindoll, and he would say, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. Now I'm not gonna say the whole thing, plus he's probably sitting at the table saying it now, but he would tell us that I am convinced that life is 10% what happens to me and 90% how I react to it. And so it is with you. We are in charge of our attitudes.